Hi, welcome to another video tutorial looking at the Evidence for Learning app version 2.0. In this tutorial, we're going to take a closer look at the Capture Evidence screen and how it changes very slightly when using group activities. For viewers used to using previous versions of Evidence for Learning, the first thing you'll notice is we've adapted the Capture Evidence screen to make full use of the iPad screen size. OK, so let's take a look. We'll tap the Add Evidence button in the middle of the screen. And this takes us to a blank Capture Evidence screen. So let's talk through quickly um, what evidence actually is in the Evidence for Learning app. Essentially, it's uh, a piece of information attached to a student and uh, made up from a date, comments, photo, uh, subject and links to a curriculum framework or learning outcomes. And each piece of information is optional. So some evidence may be text-based comments uh, with links to curriculum frameworks and others will have photos. But what they'll all have in common is they'll either be in draft mode or they'll be published. And as the name implies, draft mode is a kind of work in progress and published means you're, you're finished putting the evidence together and that piece of evidence is now ready to be included in the reports. So the screen is made up of some information panels and some buttons. And look, let's dive in and see how it works. So we'll attach students to this evidence and there's a button second down on the left which we'll press and that will open up a student picker form. Now we can select multiple students here so we're going to say this is a group evidence and you'll see the names have appeared in the information strip along the top. Next we'll add a subject to the evidence. So we press the button in the top left and that opens up the subjects picker. Now you'll recognize this, um, this is the list of subjects that you can define in the settings page. We'll pick a subject and you'll see that the subject appears in one of the information panels. So next we'll add a comment and we use the little speech bubble uh, button in the bottom left. And this enables us to type our own comments and observations. But we also have the choice of picking a comment from the comment templates that we've already set up. So if we tap the magic wand button, here's our list of comments. We can pick a, a comment and, and then we can fill in the blanks. And you can see the comment templates are a great time saver, but also help with consistency and standards in your observations. So, when we're happy with the comments, we'll tap the Done button and you'll see that the comments uh, and observations are in the information panel at the bottom of the screen. Right, so let's map this evidence to some curriculum frameworks and we'll press the Framework button on the bottom left and then we'll tap the Add Links to a Framework. We'll pick our framework and then we'll pick the section and then we'll choose um, a couple of statements. Click done and you'll see the curriculum links appearing in the information panel at the bottom of the screen. We can add a date um, and let's set this to yesterday. And the buttons on the bottom right allow us to choose a picture or use the camera. So let's choose this picture and you can see the evidence is really coming together now. So we're quite happy with this. We're happy with the students, the subjects, the date and the comments and the links. So I'm gonna set this to published using the button in the top right. And you'll notice when I tap the publish button, all of the other buttons kind of disable themselves and the evidence becomes read only. So I'm happy with this evidence. I'm now gonna tap save. So let's take a quick look at the difference in the edit evidence screen 
compared to the capture evidence screen. If we open up the drafts and we'll select this evidence, you'll notice in the top right, because this is a draft, we've now got a trash can, which enables us to delete this evidence. So we'll tap the button to delete the evidence and it prompts us, are you sure? In this case, we'll say no, um, but if you'd said yes, then that evidence is deleted and you're returned to the list of drafts. And finally, let's take a look at the evidence screen and how it's slightly different again within the group activities. So, from the menu, open up the group activities and then we'll open up this activity and you can see the evidence listed underneath. We'll choose one of those pieces of evidence to edit and you'll notice a couple of differences. The first is that there is no subject button and that's because our subject is defined within the group activity. And secondly, when we select students, it'll only allow us to select students from the class as defined in the group activity. Well, that concludes this tutorial. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Thank you very much for watching. And please share with your friends and colleagues.